Kendrick, when you're looking at the Warriors, are they going to need more from Steph? Whether or not that is fair in order to keep this dynasty and their play-in hopes afloat? No, they're not. I mean, he's doing everything and more. And, and Malika, Wendy, look, you cannot drive a vehicle with just the rims, okay? You need the rims and the tire, right? right <laughs> Sounds now, like he knows some experience. Warriors, I know. Right now, the Golden State Warriors are asking Steph Curry to be the rim and the tire, and that's not fair. Now, he could be the tire, but where is his rim at? Who is going to be that guy to help him out on a consistent basis? When you have a team and you have veterans like CP3, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, uh, Andrew Wiggins, like nobody can hold the fort down enough or, or, or be able to carry their weight on a consistent basis. Look, it's, it's a lot of times that I do disagree with Steve Kerr, but on this point, he's right. And maybe the writing is on the wall. Maybe he actually said and said, you know what? We're not good enough to compete in the Western Conference. Why should I run our franchise guy, our heart and soul, Mr. Golden State himself, into the ground. Steve yeah. Kerr is right on this one. I will Somebody say, else got to help to help. I will say, Malika, this does kind of fit into the actions over words mm. character yep. characterization because w the Warriors may not say what they actually think about their chances this year. They may say that we think we can still win everything. But the fact that while they're in an all-out fight for play-in, not play-in, right that they would elect to reduce Steph's minutes with an eye towards long-term kind of illustrates. And, you know, Perk and I have been going back and forth on this. I've been refusing to let go of the rope on the Warriors. That action uh -oh. is kind of speaking mm. towards the way the Warriors are looking at it. Right. This. Well, and to that point, both Draymond Green and Steph Curry, they were asked about the state of the Warriors after the game. Take a listen to this. How much are you now kind of tracking the Rockets? No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. The uh, situation will define itself pretty clearly, and it is in, in kind of real time. So every game matters. You know, we're inching closer to the other end of the standings that we never thought we'd be in. Nobody's going to wave the white flag and say, you know, you're, you're mailing it in, and if that means playing more minutes, and I'll be ready to do that. So the Warriors, they dropped their first game of an all-important five-game road trip. You can see here, this could really end their hopes of moving up past 10th in the standings. But looking at the end of the road trip, they have one home game against the Mavs, and then they have that game against a team that is behind them in the standings, the Rockets. So Wendy alluded to this, Perk. There's a lot of basketball that's still left to be played here. But the Warriors, they are at risk of missing the play-in completely. So what would the ramifications be if they do? I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say nothing, but they actually would be in a great spot, to be honest with you. I mean, because at the end of the day, let's be honest, are the Warriors going anywhere? Absolutely not. That, up, that uphill battle that they have to fight to get out of the play-in tournament or to stay in the play-in tournament and then make the play-in tournament get into the postseason, that's a long, that's a tall task to ask. But what they can say is, you know what, we just seen some production from Jonathan Kaminga. We seen some production from Pajewski. Like, Steph looks still like prime Steph, so they have some decisions to make, but I wouldn't look at the Warriors season if they didn't make the play-in tournament or the postseason and say that it was a failure, because in my eyes, is no other organization that has been through the adversity like the, like the Golden State Warriors has right. been through this season at no level. No level whatsoever. With the Draymond Green suspension, with the Klay Thompson uh, contract, you know, negotiation not coming to, to a stance, all that stuff, the Golden State Warriors have fought through that type of adversity like no other team. Well, let's just, let's just again, let's just be honest about the Warriors situation. If you look at where they are relative to what they thought at the start of the season, Kevon Looney is out of the rotation. He has been a mainstay for them. He's no longer contributing. Andrew Wiggins having arguably the worst season of his, his career, maybe not even arguably, the worst season of his career. Clay Thompson mm -hmm. has been demoted to the bench. Right. Chris Paul has been largely injured and made some impact, but not a major impact. Um, Steph is having a good season, but he's not having a great season by his standards. He's borderline all NBA at this point. I, I don't know if he'll make it or not. They've just, they've just gone down. But didn't we get, we got sucked in. We got sucked in for you know, a month, month and a half after Draymond Green returned, after Wiggins got back and looked a little bit better, like they got healthy and it said, oh, okay, maybe the Warriors are here. I, I don't think we would have had those same expectations. I agree with you, but I, I think we got sucked in thinking that they could maybe 
get back into the first round of the playoffs. Right. We never thought, oh, my gosh, they're back to 2000. Absolutely, yes. And I just think that when they get to the end of the season, it, they're just going to – they're not even going to have to make announcements that they're going to do. They're just going to say, look what happened. Yeah. And, and we're going to say, yeah, we know. We've been watching. We'll, we'll sprinkle a little bit of good news in for Golden State Warriors fans. They do have the easiest remaining schedule in the Western Conference. The Houston Rockets, they own the tiebreaker over. So Houston would have to finish mm. with a better record straight out than the Golden State Warriors. If they are tied, the Golden State Warriors have that tiebreaker. So Houston has to have a better record. They have won six straight without arguably their best player, Alper and Shingun, eight straight games overall they're 10 and 1 in the month of March so I'm not saying that this is not a tall task for Golden State but I still would give the edge to the Warriors but that edge is shrinking every single day so we're going to go from the 10th seed to the 9th seed because the Los Angeles Lakers they put up the most points since Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar donned the purple and gold this is what we're talking about we're going to pick this one up the Pacers and the Lakers here in the first quarter early Pascal Siakam Woo! Throws it down. Look, this was one of those games was an absolute track meet, and some of those old dudes who've been having tickets at the at the Laker games for decades, they were having great memories of better days. Austin Reeves, a little no look. Kendrick Perkins out to the corner. Whoa! Oh my God. I mean, I love Austin Reeves when he's the playmaker. You see that dive? Austin Reeves say Luca could do it. Damn it, I could do it. <laughs> Going ahead to the third quarter here. Anthony Davis is, yeah, we so saw you, you earlier, this Pascal. The, this is a rematch of the in season tournament the final. Anthony Davis that way. you want to see. Anthony Davis had a great game here. LeBron James drives, finishes strong at the cup. James had 26 points. The Lakers, they lead big at this point. And then Anthony Davis just putting an exclamation mark really on this one. This is an important win because they go on the road now. So that was they had to get this one. In the fourth quarter here, a minute left to play. After entering the quarter up 17, the Lakers lead by six. Davis does what he'd been doing all game. Davis 36 points, 16 rebounds. The Lakers up, but then Tyrese Halliburton nails that three-pointer. So the Pacers only throw by four here. Why not? Let's try it again. Ding! Got that one to go, too. The Pacers, they only trail by three with 20 seconds to go. Four-point game. Tyrese Halliburton, that's the man you want to get the ball. Just couldn't quite get it to fall. Look at that final score, 150-145. My goodness. So with the win on Sunday, the Lakers, they are a season best seven games over 500. And if you feel like, yeah, you know what, it's been a little while since the Lakers have been there. Well, that, that's because it has been a little while. This is the furthest over 500 they've been since May 16th of 2021 when they finished the 2021 season 12 games over. We could have guessed that. All right, who had the better defense to offense sequence here, Brian? Is it Wemby against the Grizzlies? Oh. <laughs> Woo! I mean, he was like angled in the air. Well, but then Mavs at home here against the Utah Jazz. The poor Jazz, they've been on the, the bad end of a couple of these lately. Oh my goodness. I mean, look, Perk, oh. I'm always going to go with Wemby. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I'm just going to go off the top of my head. I think I'm going with Wendy guess on this what? One. I'm right there with you. All three of us. All right. What about this, Brian? Who had the better pass? Nikola Jokic. Watch this. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Over the head to Aaron Gordon. Or, do you see this, though? Austin Reeves doing his best Nikola Jokic impression here. No look there to Cam Reddish in the corner? I mean. Uh, yeah. It wasn't Jokic, though. You know what I mean? It had a little bounce to it. <laughs> it, had the dip, it had a little but bounce I to like it. it. But look. Yo yeah, Reeves but Jokic is, stuff is just on time. On Reeves target. is like 6'5", Jokic is 7'5". I'm going to give it to Reeves. All right, well, what about this one, Perk? The better picture uh, the better picture here, LeBron James and D'Lo, a little classic of the D-Wade LeBron Come on. in Come 2010. On. Come on. With all due respect to D'Lo yeah, Russell, yeah, no. Come on. One of them is iconic. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> well, imitation <laughs> is the greatest form of flattery. That's, that's what they say. I kind of liked it. But, yeah, the original. All right, LeBron James is rounding into playoff form, but is the best version of the Lakers good enough to contend is with he? the rest of the West? I'm Mike today. I'm Mike. Here we go. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Stick hand. Left, 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 left. Oh, I got an XX. <laughs> We don't have much practice time. Like the other day, we had an opportunity to really get on the floor and just, just fine-tune some things that we wanted to work on offensively and defensively. So, um, you know, you can kind of tune in and, and understand what some of the calls we want to make offensively or some of the calls we want to make defensively. And the practice court is always key. Come here. 
thanks to LeBron for that behind the scenes look at the Lakers practice. They boarded a flight this morning to Milwaukee as the Lakers begin a six game road trip with 11 games left. It feels kind of like they're all but set the ninth seed in the West that could drop but not really move up. That would give them a home game to start the play in tournament though. The task at hand is starting the trip against the red hot Milwaukee Bucks which is not an easy one. Remember they have not played a game outside the state of California since February 25th. That is a month ago. So Kendrick what do you want to see from the Lakers over this final uh, long road trip extended road trip that they're going on. I just want to see the playmaking uh, or the trust of the playmaking of Austin Reeves. We saw last night with the Pacers game, as soon as Darvin Ham took uh, AD and Braun out the game, the Indiana Pacers started making a run, and then he had to call a timeout and get them right back into the game. So it's the trust of being able to rest Braun and AD. They should blow majority of these teams out if they're focused. But, you know, the others got to elevate their game. D'Angelo Russell, he got to be trustworthy. But if I'm Darvin Ham, the position that I'm in right now is never a point throughout the course of the game that I don't have Anthony Davis or LeBron James on the floor staggering those minutes or on the floor together, period. I think consistency. One of the two got to be on the floor. I think that's a fair point. I think consistency is a big thing for the Lakers. Sometimes you look at them in the first quarter and you're like, oh, LeBron's got it tonight. The mm -hmm. fastball's humming. Sometimes they don't have it. Um, and also health. They got to protect LeBron and his ankle. They got to protect AD, no matter where they are in the seating. They got to have those guys healthy. And we still don't have 100% clarity on their other guys who are on the injury list. We still don't know if Jared Vanderbilt can make it back. I would think it would be, even if Vanderbilt off that injured foot, even if he could get back right. for 12, 14 minutes a night, it could really make them a little bit more potent going into those one game mm -hmm. matches. Two things from last night. One, Spencer Dinwiddie. It was a heck of a performance from him. They've kind of been waiting to see what exactly they can get from him. And if last night is any sort of blueprint, then that is something the Lakers should feel very, very good about. But I asked Darvin Ham about this after the game. No matter how good you felt about the response when the Pacers got within single digits, you cannot give up 145 points against no. any team and hope to make a deep playoff run. That is not what the Lakers want to hang their hat on. And by the way, we're talking about all of this getting in as the eighth seed to the rights to play Denver in the first round. I'm excited about it. We'll continue this conversation tomorrow. Thanks for spending some of your afternoon with us.